Business News. And now we'll be speaking with Dr. Nawid Anwa, who is director, executive director of the AIT Consulting at the Asian Institute of Technology. They will be organizing a seminar on the theory and practice of performance-based design, the future of earthquake engineering, on August the 7th this, this week at the Sofitel Bangkok Sukhumvit. Dr. Nawid, are you on the line with us? Yes, please. Yes, I am. How, how are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. It's my pleasure. So can you tell us what is the likelihood of an earthquake in Bangkok? Yeah, this, as you know, has a question that has been asked many times, and a lot of people have commented on it. And in the past, people have been sort of uh, led to believe that uh, Thailand, and especially Bangkok, is not really prone to earthquakes. But recent research by researchers in many universities in Thailand, including Surong Khan, AIT, Thammasat, they have now concluded that uh, actually there is a risk in Bangkok uh, and in Thailand in general, from earthquakes which may be generated uh, outside the country's boundaries, for example, in Myanmar, and also now recently the one that we had in Chiang Mai. So yes, there, there is a risk of uh, an earthquake, but the main issue is not whether an earthquake will hit or not, but the question is how strong it will be. And, and that is normally defined in terms of uh, the severity of the earthquake and the probability together. So right now, people believe that there is a good chance that a reasonably strong earthquake could hit uh, or could affect uh, Bangkok, and the earthquake itself may not be generated you know, nearby. It could be an earthquake you know, coming from Myanmar or even farther away. So Bangkok would not be the epicenter, but... So that, that is still, you know, it's unlikely because I, I think no clear faults have been uh, found in close to Bangkok, but uh, actually this is uh, uh, related to the soil also, the soil type in Bangkok, which is more susceptible to earthquakes from farther than the ones generated close by. So Bangkok, as, as we know, is full of skyscrapers. So how prepared is this city? Yeah, actually, uh, I, I think you, you, you probably know that uh, until a few years ago, the building code in Thailand did not consider earthquake as a probable risk. So most of the buildings designed like 20 years ago may not have considered the earthquake resist risk in their design and construction. But now the new code uh, developed recently does require that all buildings be designed for a certain level of earthquake, and that is based on the current research. So I would say that the recent buildings which are being designed and constructed, they would, would have the acceptable uh, strength and the uh, pr pr desired properties, but the building design earlier uh, may not have. And so there is a higher uh, sort of uh, risk uh, to the buildings constructed and designed uh, in the past, and especially the buildings in the range of uh, 15 to 20 or 30 story buildings, uh, because especially pertaining to the type of the soil that we have. But of course, we have many buildings that are much taller than 30. Actually, right. the taller, much taller buildings and much smaller buildings have a less risk, uh, and that is very much related to the nature of the Bangkok clay that we have and the depth of the soft clay that we, we, we see in the city. So it's, it's very interesting to see that it's not the very tall buildings or very short buildings that may be at risk, but it's particularly more sort of uh, uh, danger to the buildings between, uh, I would say, 10 to about 20, 30 story buildings. Okay, um, so you're talking about the soil. Can you explain a little bit, like the, the, the ground in Bangkok is very soft or what? Yeah, uh, this is notoriously known as Bangkok clay and it's very, very soft, about the upper 10 meters is a very soft layer. So effectively, the real foundation of the building start at 10 or 15 meters below what we see. And that makes the buildings more flexible because you have these piles or the foundations which are going extra 10, 20 meters before they find the, the proper soil. And then after that, they go further deep into the soil by another 20, 30 meters or 40 meters, depending upon the height of the building. So we have this situation in which we have a soft layer of the ground on the top and which adds to the buildings being uh, more flexible than they would be if the, the, we, you know, we had rock directly below the foundation. And that's exactly what I was saying earlier, that that extra height makes a certain uh, size or, or height of buildings more susceptible than the others. And that is particularly the buildings in the range of uh, 
I would say, 10 to 30 story building, uh, which become more susceptible, especially to the earthquakes which occur at a far distance. And this is actually very similar to Mexico City, in which a major earthquake in 1995 occurred, which was quite far, but caused a lot of damage. And they have a very similar situation as far as the soil is concerned as Bangkok. So what do engineers have to take into account when, when designing a building for Bangkok or yeah. Mexico City? Correct. Uh, first of all, obviously, we need to be aware that there is, a, there is a risk of earthquake and we need to know what level of earthquake we need to design for. And once we have that information, and now engineers do have that information, then the, the building can be uh, designed appropriately to either absorb that earthquake or resist it as a very strong building or be flexible to a strong earthquake. You know, normally for earthquakes, we tend to design the buildings for different levels. Uh, and uh, so we can consider that into the design, make the foundations appropriately, construct the, as we call them, shear wall or the elevator course appropriately. So there are many things that we can do and that we, that we do to make sure that this will not have an adverse effect on the building performance. So um, talking about your upcoming seminar, you'll be introducing a new software, is that right? Yeah, actually it's not all that new. Uh, this has been there, actually this, this software has been developed by a company called Computers and Structures Incorporated. Uh, it's a California-based company, and as you know, California is a very uh, seismically active area, mm -hmm. and this company has been doing research in this, in this field for the last 30, 40 years. And the founder and the president of the company, Mr. Ashur of Habibullah, and to get together with his two vice presidents will be coming here to share with us the the knowledge of the earthquake engineering as well as their software that we are also using most of the people use here which are which have specially been developed to uh, address the issues of the uh, earthquake uh, resistant building can you briefly tell us what is this what what does the software do yes. this actually the software is a computer modeling technique it's a simulation technique uh, which takes which is based on a relatively new concept of performance-based design. Normally, engineers have been designing the buildings to satisfy a particular design code, but this performance-based design goes beyond that requirement and goes into more sophisticated, more elaborate, and uh, I would say highly complex analysis to determine the anticipated performance for simulated earthquake or ground motion based on the actual site conditions, like we can model the, earth, the soil below Bangkok and uh, more realistically uh, check the performance of particular or individual buildings for earthquakes before they occur and then to make the corrective uh, sort of decisions. And this, these softwares are quite sophisticated and they help us to model and analyze the building and determine the response. Uh, you know, it's, it's more like a high and high, high quality simulation software. So, so this we will is, be talking about that uh, during the seminar. This is something that some some engineering firms use already, right? Yes, of course. Um, some people use, but not a lot, actually, because because of the very high level of skill and time needed. Not many people are doing that. But AIT Consulting, we are specializing in this area for the last few years, and we have been doing this for several buildings within Thailand and also in many neighboring countries. So yes, engineers are using it, but we want to promote it further so that more people are aware and are able to use it. And we are expecting about 150 participants uh, from Thailand and neighboring countries, uh, mostly from coming from universities, consulting firms, and so on. So there's an interest in, in applying and using this software? Extreme, extremely. We, are, we, have, we have been very you know, fortunate that we have seen a considerable interest from the engineering community as well as the academia, and not only in Thailand, but we are getting about 50 participants from Philippines and Myanmar, uh, in fact, the Tall Building uh, Council uh, in Myanmar, which uh, which sort of validates the designs of the tall buildings being constructed in Myanmar, the entire committee is coming here to join the seminar. Mm, that's very impressive. And then you talked about the acceptable level of earthquake damage. How would you determine that, and what does that exactly mean? Correct. Uh, this is you know this is quite interesting because now we are able to define the acceptable levels in a term that. Uh, uh, the layman or the, uh, the average person can also understand. And then we normally have uh, three levels that we talk about. One is called the immediate occupancy level. That means during an earthquake and after an earthquake, the building should be, uh, you know, uh, should be, should be able to occupy it immediately. We don't, we shouldn't have to leave the building. So it should be safe enough for a small or a moderate earthquake. 
Uh, second level is called the life safety level, and then that one is that if a strong earthquake does come, building may, could be maybe damaged, but the life of the occupants or the human life should not be at risk, and that's called life safety. And the highest level of performance is the collapse prevention. That means the buildings must not collapse even if the strongest possible earthquake hits the city, which is theoretically you know, computed as the, we call it maximum credible earthquake. And even for that, the building should not collapse. So these three levels are typically explicitly checked, and that's why we need this sophisticated software for us to be able to, to check these things in a more reliable manner. What else is um, AIT Consulting doing in terms of earthquake technology? Yeah, we have been actually actively uh, doing a lot of training programs since uh, 2004. We started the first program. Uh, we, set, we set up a center called Asian Center for Engineering Computational Software, and the focus was to work on this computational aspect. And we started this uh, in, the, in the beginning in Philippines because that's where the highest danger was. And now we are very glad that many developers uh, in Thailand are also having their building checked by these, these performance-based criteria. And that's very encouraging, and the more and more engineers are, in fact, uh, in Philippines, we have recently evaluated about 50, 60 tall buildings. Almost all new buildings are being evaluated by, uh, by AIT Consulting, uh, by the team that we have. And our expertise is now, uh, I would say, highly developed in this particular field. So you work actively in the Philippines and in Thailand. Yes, actually uh, Philippines, Thailand, Myanmar, and uh, also in Bangladesh, and some now we are also working in Nepal. I've, I've, I was there a couple of uh, a few times in the last few months. We are working for the school safety program with the Asian Development Bank. So there's a lot of interest that we, we have now, and we are quite active in providing safe uh, environment, uh, buildings and bridges uh, for the public. Oh, great. And what if um, some of our listeners are interested in joining the seminar? Would they still be able to register? Yes, absolutely. We, they're most welcome. The, the seminar, as, as you mentioned, uh, is on the 7th of uh, August on, in Tropical Hotel, and we are expecting quite uh, a, an active uh, sort of participation from our colleagues, as well as the speaker is quite is the world-famous speaker, um, Mr. Asher. He's uh, the, the founder of this, uh, this company. And their software is used almost in every tall building in the world, including all of the tall buildings in China and Dubai and everywhere. So we, we get to hear from the, as I said, from the house's mouth, from how this technology is developing. So what is your website and the contact number, please? Yes, our website would be uh, www.consulting.ait.ac.th. And the telephone number will be 02524. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Nawid. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Business News.